This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. St. Andrew businesswoman on cocaine charges granted $500,000 bail. The St. Andrew businesswoman charged on allegations of attempting to leave Jamaica with her cocaine was on Thursday granted $500,000 bail in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. Tashika Grant, 30, who is charged with possession of cocaine, dealing in cocaine, taking steps to export cocaine, and a conspiracy to traffic cocaine, was ordered to report daily to the police and to surrender her travel documents. A curfew order was also imposed as part of her bail conditions. Grant's attorney Abeldon Foote argued that bail should be granted on humanitarian grounds. In support of his application, Foote furnished the court with a medical report which outlined that Grant was afflicted with several medical conditions that would be made worse by remaining in custody. Grant was ordered to return to court on October 27. Allegations are that the businesswoman was at the Norman Manley International Airport on September 1, where security personnel requested a search of her person. Grant was alleged to have had in her possession. Grant was alleged to have had in her possession several packages of white powdery substance resembling cocaine strapped to her body. The packages weighed about one kilogram, which the police said has an estimated street value of U.S. thirty thousand dollars. Grant was subsequently charged. Stolen cows recovered in St. Anne, three men in custody. Three men were arrested in St. Anne this morning, and a Juicy Patties truck was seized following the recovery of stolen cows. The truck with the stolen livestock was intercepted by cops during an operation. The police are now searching for another truck that's believed to be carrying more stolen animals. The police report that information was received around 10 o'clock this morning that Pradel thieves had reportedly stolen about 15 cows between Alexandria and the Cave Valley in the parish overnight. An operation was then set up and the truck carrying six cows was stopped. The three men aboard the truck were arrested. The registration plate of the truck was checked and the truck owned by Juicy Beef, the police said in a statement Friday afternoon. Police personnel at Alexandra Police Station indicated that persons said to be owners of the stolen cows are coming forward. The police say an update will be provided when more information is available. Six-year-old St. James boy dies in heavy rainfall. A St. James mother is mourning the tragic death of her six-year-old son, Giovanni Kidd, just days into the new academic year. Young Giovanni, a grade one student of the Catadupa Primary School, is believed to have been washed away by heavy rainfall in his community as he walked home from school on Thursday afternoon. The boy's mother, Georgia Adams, told the news that she was at work when her eldest daughter called her to say that they could not locate Giovanni. A search team was formed and they subsequently located the deceased boy's body in a stream on Thursday evening. It is believed that heavy rainfall forced the six-year-old boy into a ditch. Adams stated that she is broken as Giovanni cried to not attend school on Thursday morning. More information to come. Woman and the sons killed in Mobe crash were rushed to hospital. Thursday night's motor vehicle collision in St. James, in which a woman and her two sons were killed, reportedly occurred as they were rushing to hospital. The deceased have been identified as 75-year-old Hazel Thompson, housewife, 56-year-old Cleveland Thompson Mason, and 54-year-old Barrington Thompson Mason, all of Unity Hall in St. James. The men were reportedly taking their mother, who had fallen ill, to get medical attention. It's reported that about 11.50 p.m., the family members were traveling from Reading towards Montego Bay in a gray Nissan AD wagon motor car, which was being driven by Barrington. On reaching a section of AGS Coombs Highway in the vicinity of ATL Motors, he lost the control of the vehicle, which crashed into a median. The police were called and on their arrival, the injured victims were rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital, where Hazel and Cleveland were pronounced dead on arrival and Barrington died while undergoing treatment. Two other persons were also reportedly injured in the crash. Police charged two women who disarmed a firearm holder. The Spanish Town Police have charged two women, 
for illegal possession of firearm and assault at the common law, stemming from a dispute that occurred at Fairfield Road in Spanish Town, St. Catherine. Charged are Shannon de Cardova, 43-year-old nail technician of Colza Garden Fairfield Road in Spanish Town, St. Catherine, and Lorraine MacDonald, 60 years old, of Fairfield Road in Spanish Town. Reports from the St. Catherine Police are that de Cardova and de MacDonald had an altercation with a man. During the confrontation, de Cardova allegedly pushed the man to the ground and took away his licensed .38 Smith & Wesson revolver and pointed it at him. MacDonald also took control of the weapon and reportedly pointed it at the man as well. The police were called and de Cardova and MacDonald arrested and later charged. Gunman fires shots walks away after robbery. Police have launched a manhunt for a gunman who robbed a householder and her guest before firing several shots and casually walking away. The dramatic incident happened in Glenmuir Haven in Maypen, Clarendon on Wednesday morning. It was reported that about 12.30 a.m., the woman and her guest were at the front of the house when the gunman pounced upon them. He reportedly held them at gunpoint and robbed the householder of one black iPhone 11 valued at a Jamaican $100,000 and a black Samsung Galaxy A20 valued at $25,000. The guest was also robbed of his LG cell phone. Police said the robber fired three rounds from his firearm in the air and then walked away from the yard. The householder immediately reported the incident. Police later arrived and while processing the crime scene, found the two spent shells. Westmoreland Police to get additional resources to fight crime. The Westmoreland Police Division is to get a boost in resources in response to the upsurge in murders and the shootings. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the Jamaica Constabulary Force has increased its cadre of recruits, which will allow for the deployment of more personnel to divisions in need. Part of the plan for Westmoreland, General Anderson said, is to provide an enhanced police quick response team. With the wider use of motorcycles for transportation in that parish, he noted that the criminals will naturally take advantage of their prevalence and use them in carrying out crimes. For this reason, he believes a bolstered quick response team is needed in the parish to aid in quickly apprehending these criminals. General Anderson was speaking in Westmoreland on Thursday where he met with stakeholders to discuss solutions to the issues of violence, crime, and murders in the parish. But it's not just numbers, and that's why I came. I wanted to hear the plan. I wanted to hear the details that we're going after the right things and that we're going to use the numbers correctly. Clearly, there is, a, is room in Westmoreland, probably more than most places, for an enhanced quick response uh, team on motorbikes, because just because of the wide use of motorbikes in Westmoreland, just as transport. But obviously, if that's the large um, sort of transport, it's also going to be the means by which bad guys will move. So you can look forward to seeing some of that here in Westmoreland. Manchester Police Report Increase in Most the Major Crimes The Manchester Police are reporting an increase in most of the seven categories of major crimes in the parish up to September 4. Inspector Berthelin Lloyd, sub-officer in charge of the GCF's safety and the security branch in Mandeville, said that the police are facing significant challenges with murders and robberies. 37 murders and 81 robberies have so far been committed in the parish this year. Inspector Lloyd said a major challenge is that some of the murders are committed by persons coming from outside of the parish and that the crimes are not only in one area, they are spread right across the parish. One of the challenges we are seeing, some of these murders are committed by persons coming from outside of the parish. And the crimes are not only in one area, it is spread right across the parish. parish. So the community groups will have to help us because it's gone are the days when we could say it is confined to one area. It's right across the parish. And we are seeing where these crimes are not perpetrated by one individual, small groups of persons. And some of the criminals now have become so sophisticated that some of the break-ins that we are having, they are using welding torch to get into the buildings. 
We are encouraging persons to get involved in the community groups, install the security cameras, because this can help us. Because if we are unable to catch them on spot, at least this will help us in the investigations. We also encourage persons to have WhatsApp group with the community members so that persons can be informed of happenings in the area. And this they can do to help to alert persons of what is happening in the area and also to alert the police in a timely manner. Because as you know, communities are large and we are few in numbers and most of our stations are only equipped with one service vehicle. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.